Well, thank you so much. Oh. Okay, continue. Um, so, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity um, that I that I have. Oh, excuse me. Let me. All right, I'm ready. Thank you so much. I'm so excited that I get to be here to share with you some of my passion about Lao Tzu and in particular about Lao Tzu's water metaphor. I'm very grateful for this opportunity that I have been given to be able to share. So thank you for coming as well. I would, yes, pose these two questions. What does it mean to be water for Lao Tzu at least? And what is its interpretation? In looking at Lao Tzu, uh, there are two chapters, chapters 8 and 78, which are particularly all about water. Lao Tzu said that water is the highest good. So although he never defined the concept of goodness, but through his metaphor of water, we can learn a lot about what he thought constitutes this concept. Also, because water is the highest good, as he writes about the sage or the ideal man, we also are given an example of what being a good person is like. Same thing goes for when he talks about the, the ruler, the ideal ruler or the sage ruler, as well as the concept of Tao itself, because Tao represents the absolute truth for Lao Tzu, Tao becomes the foundation <clears throat> for his teachings. Thus, <clears throat> by looking at his teachings on Tao, the ruler, the sage, or water itself, we can learn better to better understand his metaphor. And so I draw on different chapters to take out certain principles of water-like behavior, if you would principles that would help us understand his concept of goodness and this metaphor. And so I'd like to start with a quote from chapter 8. This will be all from the Tao Te Ching. We read, <clears throat> the goodness of water is that it benefits the 10,000 creatures, meaning all things. Yet it does not content, but is content with the places all men disdain. If we think of water as it goes down the stream and it um, hits water, it won't stop and say, I'm not moving until you do, or it won't fight its way either, but it will flow, benefiting all things it touches. I think it's interesting that over time, even the rock's rough edges become smooth a symbol, I think, of the positive influence of water, even on the rock. So the principle that I take from, one of the principles that I take from this chapter on water is simplicity. How water goes about its own business, if you will, um, with the only intent of doing, of benefiting all things that it touches. There's no second agenda, so we could say as well. In chapter 23, further analyzing this concept of water, Lao says, we read that those who conform with Tao, Tao is also happy to have them. Now, because Tao is not forceful, what this passage is saying to me as I read that, those that align their lifestyles or themselves to, to Tao. There is the reason why Tao can be happy to have them is because a connection is created between ourselves when we align ourselves with the way or Tao and Tao itself. And so connection would become another principle that has to do with goodness or what water life behavior embraces. From chapter 27, further studying this concept of water, we read that the good man is the teacher of the bad. And the bad man is that from which the good man draws lessons from. 
I find here a secret of Tao. So while the aim of Lao Tse is to help us, uh, teach us that we can lead a natural and spontaneous life to become our best self, we actually can never fully accomplish this alone. We need others, even others that are both better than us and not as good as us with regards to following the way. And so being inclusive becomes a principle uh, that allows us to further progress. And that has to do with this water-like behavior as well. From chapter 13, we read about the ideal ruler of an empire. He who in dealing with the empire loves his subjects as one should love one's body is the best person to entrust the empire to. Now, clearly to, we can see love as this key principle from this chapter. Because Lao Tzu, when he speaks about the, the ruler, means the sage ruler or the ideal ruler, it is very telling that in as we look at the Chinese, we, we see the character <clears throat> Tsai in the simplified or Ruo in the traditional, meaning if and only if or on the conditions of. It is only, it's not only that the best person to be, to, to have this position is the one that has this principle or attribute of love but only that person would be the ideal one to be entrusted the empire to. Um, now, looking at a synthesis of only these four principles, of course, there are many others, but because of time, I've chose these, these four. With simplicity, we can see that uh, such a person, yes, he can be or she could be content with what one has, what he or she has in life, but that doesn't, although, but that, but that person may also not necessarily be proper and prudent as we learn in Lao Tzu, that being another attribute. Stretch an arrow to its fullest and you will soon wish you had stopped in time. So being proper and timely is another uh, principle. And so simplicity does not encircle being proper. Hence, it's not the highest good which water is. Connection. Well, with Lao Tzu, all things that are good are a connection in the end that leads us to that, it leads us to that connection to Tao or with Tao rather. Therefore, the question would be which of those principles would have that strongest connection one may also be inclusive, as we have seen, is one of the principles of a water-like behavior, but that doesn't mean that it is, one is being inclusive for the right reasons. One could be inclusive for, because of a third agenda. One could have ulterior motives. Therefore, it does not embrace the principle of inclusiveness, all other principles of goodness or of what water means. Finally, love. With love, I did find that quality that embraces all others. And also interestingly enough, Lao Tzu speaks of the sage ruler, the ideal ruler as possessing this quality of love. Further, I think strengthening the, the idea or the notion of love as a higher principle amongst that which is good. In chapter 21, we read that Tao has in it the essence, which essence is very real. And in this reality is the evidence of Tao. Evidence is one principle that I take from this chapter. What is the evidence of Tao? And I believe that this is found within the highest good or principle, water-like principle. Um, if we stop to consider what is it around us that is the evidence of Tao, uh, we can further relate this to the principle that I mentioned embraces all others in Lao Tzu, which is love. 
let me share um, this image of this chapter 21. Let us, let's say that this circle represents Tao. I know that Tao is shapeless, uh, but for practical purposes, uh, let's take this circle to be Tao. Lao Tzu said that in Tao is the essence, as we just read, and that in it lie the evidences. Well, if this is Tao, and in Tao is the essence, and in it lie the evidences, if we, if we pay attention to in chapter 14, Lao Tzu's teaching that to know the essence of Tao, one must first act in line with Tao, we then learn that to go from Tao to its essence, one needs to act. And on the one hand, we have this light that Lao Tzu speaks of, this inner light or conscience. Water, or water-like principles that we have been looking at, as well as many others, further aid us in acting in line with Tao. And when we do, therein lies the evidence, which I understand to be love. Love does also match the mystical concept of this water metaphor of Lao Tzu. We cannot see it, touch it, but we can perceive that love from a stranger as well as from someone that we've known all of our lives. And it is very easy uh, to oftentimes tell when someone is helping you if he or she is doing it with that love, which is the evidence that what he or she is doing is in line with Tao, or in other words, this water-like behavior. Thank you very much for listening.